The word flop is often used to describe an uninteresting or unbalanced game with terrible controls. Or if the game has an absurd difficulty level. The virtual reality game Tower of Trials fits this description exactly. After the launch of the game, Korean oldsters, each of whom felt it was their duty to outplay its developers, rushed to conquer its locations, refusing to eat or sleep for 365 days a year. However, after three years, gamers realized that Tower of Trials is a game that is simply impossible to pass, and its boss, the Gate Guardian, is worthy of being called invincible. Polar temperature, which instantly freezes the character and a maze 10,000 kilometers long, this game is literally created for torture, not entertainment. Not surprisingly, the game's popularity began to plummet, it would have died a long time ago if it weren't for a couple of nerds who kept playing it. Gene Heck himself was able to reach the final level 50. It was interesting however, unlike the others, he conquered the tower in a completely new way. Regular attempts to sweep it allowed him to memorize the intricacies of the levels, all for the sake of getting the long-awaited achievement, which took 11 years of his life. Heck couldn't even imagine that he was about to pass the last floor, he assumed that it wasn't too late to start streaming, because even a game like this could gather views. Suddenly, an envelope appeared in front of his eyes, from which fell a message thanking him for logging into the game regularly. The information window also warned about the update of the game, which interested the guy, he could not understand where the developers got the money for the relaunch, because the game had lost almost all of its profits. Nevertheless, he didn't care. Heck took off his virtual reality goggles, deciding that he would never get into this game again, and he's done with streaming too. Although he's only 27 years old and doesn't need to feed anyone but himself, living on $500 a month is a bit problematic. He also decided to warn his coach that he will take a break from the sport for a while. Nevertheless, it was necessary to go to the scheduled stream, where he was going to announce the closure of the channel, but after reading the comments, he decided to just write about it on the page. Several bottles drunk made themselves felt, reflected by a headache. Heck decided to upload the video of the last level, but as soon as he turned on his computer, a notification about a stream popped up on the monitor screen, the author of which claimed that the Tower of Trials had appeared in reality. He couldn't believe that this was happening in reality, as suddenly the clouds began to thicken. Heck thought for a second. All this was painfully reminiscent of the prologue when first entering the game. Suddenly, an information window appeared in front of him, announcing that the installation of the new update was complete. The dumbfounded players were ordered to move to the next floor of the tower within 90 days, or else humanity would disappear. Heck decided to cool his head, if the Tower of Trials had indeed appeared in reality, he couldn't sit idly by he had to act quickly. He took off his seat and ran to the place where he could get that item. Of course, there was a possibility that humanity would disappear, but Heck still didn't understand why he was so agitated. As expected, the people outside were out of place, some were waiting for their train, and some were about to flee to another country, though this was rumored to be happening all over the world. Heck rushed past them and went down into the subway, because he realized that now was not the time to run, but the time to fight. The place he was headed to was nicknamed the neighborhood outside the tower on the Korean server, there are no more than 30 of them in the whole world, and this is the closest. There were already a number of people gathered in Seoul's underground marketplace, Heck assumed that everyone gathered here must have passed the first level. All they had to do was stare at each other, because the number of items you can get here is limited, so it would be a great luck to get at least five pieces. Suddenly, one of the gamers recognized Heck from his streamings, and then he introduced himself as Lee jang -soo, a TV program partner and streamer with an audience of more than 500,000 subscribers. By the way, Heck the young man also recognized the president of the company he contracted with. The man asked what level the interlocutor had reached and suggested using his knowledge to win, after all, they are colleagues. Gene Heck definitely disagreed with the last statement, because the bastard had deceived all the streamers by offering to sign contracts that, contrary to expectations, turned out to be very unfavorable. As the document went into effect, there was nothing the streamers could do about it despite the losses they suffered. In the end, the comrades with whom Heck had started from the bottom began to drop out one by one. John Su grabbed the guy's shoulder, promising to change the terms of the contract. Realizing that the world had changed, Heck didn't hold back and punched the insolent man with force, knocking out several teeth. He felt a sense of relief. Nevertheless, it should show up by now. Suddenly, a tree began to rise from the fountain in the center of the station. The appearance of the mangrove greatly surprised everyone gathered, except Heck, who was glad that his memory did not fail him. 
Suddenly, fruits of greed began to appear on its branches, each of which increases the level of strength, agility, stamina, and magic. These are incredibly useful items, the only problem is that there are only four of them. Gene Heck realized that this was about to get rough, and in an instant, the crowd went wild, and people made a veritable crush in an attempt to reach the fruits. John Su shouted that they could have teamed up and split the fruit between the two of them, for then they would both benefit, but it was too late as the tree was already ripe. Heck told the jerk to shut up if he didn't know anything, because it wasn't time yet. Finally, one of the men managed to pick the fruit, causing his dexterity to immediately increase by three values. Heck suggested that ordinary townspeople would probably not even know that the tree was bearing fruit. Players who abandoned the game at the initial levels would try to eat the fruit, while nerds like himself would enjoy watching the twisted and violent process. Suddenly, the tree dropped one of its powerful branches to the ground, nearly knocking one of the players to the ground. He remembered not to eat all the fruit, he ordered the man to spit out what he had eaten as soon as possible, because he had died 50 times at this point. People began to scatter in panic, but Heck only got closer to the tree. He noticed that Jiangsu was also about to give up, and the latter confirmed that he simply refused to die like that. In that case, the young man stated that Su was in danger of missing out on the reward of this scenario, which could only be obtained when all the fruit was eaten. The man kept wondering why Heck was not paying attention to the fruits, and he seemed to have now figured out the reason. Of course, he didn't know the details of this game, but he could already smell victory. In that case, he asked the boy what he was going to do now, and Heck said with all confidence that he intended to go inside. However, he warned that if they moved one at a time, they would only become easy targets, so they needed to come in from both sides and distract the tree. The young man asked to remember that even one mistake could cost a life, but Sue objected that he had been through the game many times too. Heck lunged forward, dodging branches, but suddenly found that John was not nearby. The insolent man smiled broadly, explaining that no one would listen to a fool like him, and therefore was glad that the guy would be just bait. However, it's even better that Sue stays the same, because he doesn't even realize that the bait is the one behind him. Suddenly, the tree wrapped its branches around the man and began to completely swallow his body with great speed. At last, Sue only managed to only ask to be saved, but Heck didn't understand why, and advised him to file a complaint with his law firm if he didn't like something. Now it was possible to fully concentrate on himself. The guy calculated the attack of the branches with precision and dodged them quite easily, causing the tree to pierce itself, exposing the core. Everything was going just like in the game. Heck grabbed a sharpened splinter of branch from the floor and asked the tree to just hand over the peon. Since it's a story quest, it doesn't even award experience points, at most, you can last 24 hours on the honor roll. The tree wasn't going to give up so easily, so it used the bloodstock ability. Even though Heck was an experienced player, even he would have a hard time dodging all the attacks, but you could change the trajectory as much as you wanted and the branches flew past. Mangra lifted both up and up and brought them together to crash down, however the young man managed to parry the blow. He realized that there was no point in being afraid, for there was no reason to be, for he had repeated it a million times. Jean Heck continued to dodge the mangrove's attack and was almost at his target when suddenly a whole host of glowing moths flew out of the crown. The young man realized that they were sleep butterflies that sprayed a substance that put the player into a dream. A newcomer, not knowing how to defend himself, could fall asleep even if they took just one breath, but it was very easy to defend oneself, one simply had to hold one's breath. Heck covered his mouth and nose with his jacket and ran forward. He pierced a tree with a picked up piece of debris and then began climbing toward the cenote in an attempt to reach the core. Soon the information window reported that the greed mangrove tree had fallen and the trunk itself had split in half. Heck had never imagined that constantly analyzing and processing defense and attack techniques would be so useful in life. He even felt grateful that he had been playing Tower of Trials all this time. The young man noticed another similarity to the game, the tower uses the honor roll to find out the player's personal information. He decided not to give his own name, since he couldn't share confidential information with anyone. Moreover, Heck assumed that he would get in trouble if the game found out that he was an old nerd. Suddenly he noticed that she had decided to compromise, it looked like it would be possible to keep the personal data secret after all. In any case, the only thing that mattered now was what was hiding inside the tree. The young man stuck his hand in and pulled out the heart of the tree, a peony. While each fruit increases just a few stats by 3 points, the peony gives as much as 12 bonuses. As a result, you can go up as much as 4 levels, so it's the best reward you can get on all 50 floors. 
He swallowed the peony and then opened the status window, wanting to check the assimilation. Tech found out that he already had 12 points at once, so he now had the strongest first level. An hour later, the video of the mangrove tree falling was uploaded online. Mostly people appeared surprised, thinking it was either luck or a cheat. But after reading the comments, everyone believed them. Of course, the content of the comments varied, but the essence remained the same, and there were even those who offered exorbitant sums for signing the contract. Heck knew that it was almost impossible to defeat the tree of greed at the first level, but he had not even expected such a strong reaction. The young man thought, his life could hardly be called easy. Sometimes, he couldn't even pay his rent, and he had to starve for days to buy food for the stream. If he had been offered a billion one a few days ago, he would have accepted it without a second thought, but now his knowledge of the game's lore is invaluable. The most important thing right now was to keep everything secret. Now it was time to move on to the next location. In the game, the tower magic spread throughout Seoul. It didn't bring any drastic changes except that all the relics have become real. They are stored in the tower itself, though of course they are copies. After some thought, Jean concluded that the greatest number of relics could only be obtained at the National Museum. This building can be considered a real treasure warehouse. The only problem is that all the players will come here for the relics, because the tree appeared in seven places, and the National Museum in the city is one. People would probably come from all over, and there would definitely be some nerds among them. Heck went inside where it was surprisingly quiet. Suddenly he noticed the charred remains of a human body against the wall, which had already begun to crumble. He concluded that someone had tried to get the legendary items after all. Heck assumed that people would change with the world, but the assumptions were far from reality. Everyone was getting bolder and going after the relics in the museum. He knew that they had come here to get something special, a map. Of course, people don't want to explore the administrative districts of Korea, but the ancient magic map contains information about the Tower of Trials, which is why it is so valuable to all players. The location of labyrinths, historical sites, monsters and valuable items is what the owner can learn. Even though it only contains information about 10 floors, it is enough to make the map one of the most valuable items, but most players don't even realize that the best relics are stored underground. One of the men watched in amazement at these idiots killing each other for items, and soon yelled for everyone to stop or else he promised to blow the head off anyone who moved. Another player threatened to break his head with a hammer if he did. The man realized that words would not suffice, so he made his hand stone, shouting that the card belonged to him. Suddenly, a strange grandfather came up from behind, determined to dispute who the map belonged to. He introduced himself as Min Yungwu, explaining that his name meant something like peaceful coexistence. The man with stone hands threatened that he could break the old man's neck in a moment, but he offered to see what would happen first, the offender would break his neck or he would be burned to ashes. The big guy couldn't believe that some grandfather had already mastered magic, but before he could even realize it, he was stabbed through the flames and turned into the same charred remains. Min Jong asked the girl to finish what she had started, and Yuri promised that she would. She pulled out an Anubis figurine and activated it, summoning the real monster. Re threatened that whoever moved would become her enemy, reminding her that Anubis likes to eat heads. The girl <laughs> offered to cooperate. Those around them dropped their weapons, choosing life over the map. Suddenly, Jean Heck walked past the crowd as if nothing had happened, surprised by the commotion around him. He picked up the map from the floor, glad that at least it hadn't been torn up. Such disrespect made Yuri very angry, so she ordered the monster to get rid of the guy. Anubis stepped forward and swung his spear. Jean Heck remained steadfastly in place, and then simply waved his hand, knocking the weapon out of the monster's clutches, which greatly surprised not only his mistress, but also all the surrounding players. Even avid gamers didn't think it was possible to pull this off with a whole arm. Nevertheless, Heck realized that they had no idea about his 12 power-ups, and thus asked the girl what she would do now that her puppy was unarmed. Although somewhat confused, Yuri still took out four more figurines from her bag. Jean knew that with a low level of magic, it was impossible to control five monsters at the same time, and so she definitely wasn't as easy as she looked, and neither was the old man, it seemed that nerds weren't that few. Noticing her opponent's steadfastness, Re assumes that it's just a bluff and he's a self-righteous jerk, in which case Heck has decided to teach her a lesson. Nevertheless, he agrees that it's theoretically very difficult to assess the strength of an opponent, so now the guy is going to clearly show the gulf between them. He took out one of the papyri depicting a majestic tiger, and then used the ability, summoning the Lord of the Mountains. The girl couldn't believe her eyes, and Heck only lightly stroked the fierce beast, 
wondering how some jackal could dare to bare his teeth at the great predator. Finally, the young man gave the command to destroy his opponents, and the tiger's paw came down on the nearest Anubis, pinning the latter to the ground. His king got ready for the fight, as did the tiger, who let out a long growl, revealing huge snow-white fangs. The predator grabbed the second opponent and threw his body, torn into two parts, aside. Soon finding herself face to face with the huge beast, Yuri wondered how such a thing was possible. Although she knew many ways to use relics, this was definitely something new. The girl assumed that she would definitely be skinned now, so she knelt down, still puzzled as to who this guy was. Jean asked her to hand over the mask of Tutankhamun. After hearing assurances that the item was useless in Korea, the young man ordered the tiger to emit a growl for intimidation, and soon got what he wanted. Yuri assumed that Heck would now go after the map, though in fact, he had even forgotten about it. He ordered the tiger to stand and make sure everyone stayed in their seats, and after noticing the tense faces of the players, he concluded that the preparations were complete. Finally, one of the tower's most valuable abilities could be sent for. The old man was wondering what was going on downstairs when Jean Hex suddenly joined him. The mage wondered who had managed to break through Eu Ri and her monsters to get here, so he was worried. Both of them were observing the first level magic passage. The guy touched it, admitting that it was the first time he had seen such a thing, but John Wu explained that neither physical nor magical effects worked. Heck assumed that magic worked in reverse here, then remembered one spell. He told his grandfather that he seemed to know how to destroy the passage, but he had a condition, John Wu must use flame magic without stopping, because that way he could weaken the entrance until he collected all the necessary relics and returned. The old man thought seriously, for he would have to work his magic outside while Heck stayed inside, but he explained that it was the only way. He reminded him that dark times were coming, so he couldn't leave empty-handed, but he promised to give up the map, since he needed another item. John Wu asked him if he was sure he would give the card, and he confirmed that he didn't want to make an enemy of the cyclic magic wielder. The old man realized that taking his word for it was the only option anyway. He agreed and promised that he would try not to let him down, and then threw the flame as hard as he could into the passageway. The young man repeated the spell and jumped across the passage, promising that he would also try to return as soon as possible, but would do it in his own way. Jean noticed that unlike the rest of the floors, there were no signs of other players here. Besides, it looked like this buddy had already done everything, and the portal was probably opened by him as well. It doesn't matter if there are people fighting elsewhere or not, he just takes the things he needs and leaves, he doesn't get involved in ventures. However, there's something else this buddy doesn't know about. Heck walked over to the Lee Dynasty coin stand and took out a bunch. In order to create a perfect skill just for him, he needed a few more puzzle pieces, a Persian metal casting mold and the right eye of Tutankhamun's mask. A window appeared, informing you that the relics had interacted. However, if there is a desire to achieve more, a corresponding price must be paid. Hector opened the bundle of coins, sprinkling them on the remaining two items, and the window reported the successful union of three nearly impossible relics. The young man was now the owner of the Eye of Truth, the most powerful of the five. However, this was not the main reason he had come here, the main thing was to complete the secret task of unification, which unlocked a new ability, the ability to copy and save different abilities, and to combine them to create more powerful skills. In the Tower of Trials, it was an opportunity to become stronger, so now Jean Heck was also the owner of a powerful weapon that belonged only to him. The window announced that there were certain conditions for copying abilities, by fulfilling them, one could create world memories, and by combining the abilities stored there, one could use the skills of another dimension. Suddenly, the old man ordered to go back out if the young man was finished. Heck wondered what it would take to work his magic, and the information window clarified that John Wu had worn masks all his life, so his ability could be adopted if his true self was exposed. Heck knew only one way to accomplish this, piss the old man off. The old man repeated his request to hurry up, but Heck told him that he could not use his magic anymore, and in general, it was not worth the effort. In this case, John Woo did not understand why the guy asked him to weaken the passage, and Jean explained that he had already stopped the effects of magic with his spell, because there was no point in affecting the passage, which cannot even scratch. Thanks to that, the old man's mana reserve is practically at zero, so now you can piss him off. Heck looked at the Kara, over the years of the game, he literally learned the entire structure of the tower, so he can do without hints, but you cannot give such a valuable relic just like that. The young man took out a lighter from his pocket and held it to the map, causing it to immediately burst into flames. Heck realized that if someone got hold of the map, 
the secret of his ability would be jeopardized, so the best option was to simply burn bridges. John Wu became furious and shouted that he would wipe the bastard into powder, which allowed the condition to be met. Heck had now successfully mastered the fire element ability, which was immediately stored in the world recall. The old man reiterated that he was going to teach the boy a lesson, but the latter assumed that his interlocutor had never understood why the card had been burned. In that case, Heck stepped forward and then activated his new ability, much to the old man's surprise. John Wu realized that this skill was the same exact skill as his, but the difference in power was simply enormous. Since this guy didn't even need a map, the man couldn't understand what kind of monster was in front of him at all. Heck warned the old man that if he wanted to continue to quietly explore the floors of the tower, he'd better listen. Soon the young man was already down the stairs, thinking about the nerds, the number of which in the museum does not exceed four. Of course, many people don't want to put their lives on the line, which surprised Heck, because you can't run ahead of the world without risking anything. However, right now, he was only worried about mastering more skills. Before leaving, he warned the old man that he would contact him soon, but in the meantime, he asked him to level up with that girl. Now Heck was given the opportunity to act as he saw fit, but there was still a long way to go. To begin with, it is necessary to determine the level of importance of the abilities and gather the most necessary ones. Because of some body limitations, it would not be possible to master all of them, but Heck decided that the most important ones would be mastered alone. Suddenly he felt hungry, and so he decided to go to the nearest cafe and eat a bowl of soup. The visitors of the place could not believe their ears and eyes, listening to the news about several dozen corpses and even more wounded found in the National Museum. The young man kept hearing about the same thing going on in museums around the world, and the world in general. As expected, players from other countries are not sitting still. Suddenly, a surveillance tape was displayed on the screen, which included not only the monsters of that girl, but also Gene Heck himself with his huge tiger. The audience could not believe that a man could do such a thing, and some of them remembered the guy who was discussed in the chat room of the tower. The young man realized that he was beginning to be recognized, and so he decided to think about disguises. The announcer said that the government was already investigating the tower, and the government officials who had any information were organized into a group called the Awakened Association. Contrary to Gene Hayek's expectations, the officials reacted rather quickly, and if a group with people with abilities had already been formed, the government was serious. Soon, Han Sang Jin, the head of the association, addressed the viewers, asking anyone who also had any data about the tower to contact the government officials, promising a decent salary and rank depending on the level of the player. However, this didn't apply to the guy shown on the air, Gene Hayek was offered any terms. Some of the audience even envied the lucky guy, because his life could change dramatically, but Heck himself realizes that he is a target of the government, which probably keeps him for a fool who can be easily used. The young man realizes that one skilled player is worth a hundred mediocre ones, so the head of the association simply lures the nerd to him, having a trump card up his sleeve. Heck wondered how this Han Sang Jin came to hold such a position, he seems to have outstanding abilities or just played Tower of Trials for a long time. Of course, Heck would prefer the first option, as it would be quite good to copy an outstanding skill. He glanced at his watch, tonight at 7pm, when the hand shows the new time, the tower will open. Soon Jean was already standing in a new world, which was no different from the game, and despite the whole situation, he seemed to be glad to be here. Looking around, the guy assumed that everyone around was new, and the game itself presented those present with an entrance bonus of 100 gold coins. The information window also announced the ability to shoot and upload videos to the network, and for every 10,000 views, another 100 coins are given out. However, everything will depend on the level of the player, so the game advised to carefully approach the choice of content, and also warned that tweaking and other misconduct will be penalized. Heck knew that's what connects the players in the tower to everyday people on the outside, the game's most exciting feature, the streamer system. People would watch in amazement at those whose abilities allowed them to climb floors, while the streamers themselves received currency for their popularity. A few players pushed the guy as he ran past, and he noticed that everyone was in a hurry to get somewhere, probably to get ahead of the others or to get rich. In fact, it's quite easy for Heck to get money, because he knows everything about the game, but it's irrational to share extremely important information for the sake of a handful of coins. The young man has already decided on his primary actions, and they are different from the intentions of other players. When Heck was conquering the 30th floor, he took the same path time after time until he came across the same ruins. 
He soon realized that all his previous actions to pump up his character were fundamentally wrong. That time he had to delete the hero on the development of which were spent years and start all over again. Almost six years had passed, and now he was standing at the entrance to the Minotaur's Labyrinth, which was famous for its intricately woven paths and many traps. Heck knew full well that everything he needed was there, so he could gather at least the basics. He admitted that he hadn't thought about coming back here, it wasn't pleasant, but it was also very exciting at the same time. Nevertheless, Gene Heck decided to start and swung open the gates of the labyrinth once inside. Everything remained the same as last time, and even the sun moths, which the guy was even glad to meet. Suddenly he noticed a group of teenagers, so he immediately asked who they were and what they were doing here. The girl explained that they were on their way to the hunting grounds, but saw an open maze and decided to go in. In fact, just 10 minutes earlier they had been watching a guy who looked like he knew just what to do. Despite her companion's objections, the girl insisted on following him, reminding him that starting at the Tower of Trials was the most important stage. The friends agreed, but they didn't think that Heck would share resources and items for thanks, so the girl offered to make him stay in the labyrinth forever. Now she offers Huck to explore the labyrinth together, because it will be easier and safer in the company. Heck was in no hurry to agree, however, because this girl was clearly trying to set her own terms. He used the Eye of Truth and discovered that she had a very interesting skill called communication, which allowed her to get close to people without any problems. The girl introduced herself as Park Hana, admitting that she could only reach the second floor, but Jean was no longer listening, his head was filled with thoughts that by copying the ability, he would be able to negotiate with one character in the future. The new acquaintance's companions also gave their names, but only a few of them had managed to pass the first floor, and some of them had never even heard of the game. Heck smiled sweetly as he introduced himself, though he realized that they were more likely to become enemies than friends, so he didn't bother memorizing their names. Hana suddenly hung on his arm, wondering how many floors he'd gotten through, but Hayak felt something strange, as if he'd known the girl for a long time and therefore wanted to trust her. He released himself and asked her to step back, because he would have definitely given in if he hadn't known about the ability. Na laughed awkwardly, wondering what was going on, because the effect should already be working. In that case, she asked for more details about the labyrinth and the monsters in it. Jean did not object, and explained that this maze periodically changes its structure. Young people were perplexed, what he was carrying, because it is a location of the first level, as suddenly the ground itself began to shake, and the blocks that made up the wall of the labyrinth, began to move, confirming the words of the guy. Suddenly, one of the blocks rushed straight into Hana at speed, and she barely had time to bounce when she heard her friend's warning, and then a huge stone almost fell on them from the ceiling. Soon it was over, but the guys noticed the absence of one girl from their company, and the guy named Chul Sik wondered what this thing was, because the ruins of the first level should be about the same in difficulty. Hayak shook off his surprise and wondered if they had never been in a ruin that changed its structure, but Hana said that it was not something a beginner could do, so she asked Hymin to use her ability to find the way out, but the latter explained that her skill had stopped working after the maze was destroyed, so it looked like they were stuck. Heck had wondered from the beginning why these guys were so calmly entering a completely unfamiliar maze, relying only on their navigation skill, figuring it was no more difficult than going to the store. This idiots were clear, however, the young man knew that someone else would show themselves soon. Suddenly, Hana shouted why Heck hadn't reported such an important thing as changing the maze, blaming the latter for almost getting them nailed by rocks. The others confirmed that they almost died because of him, and also pointed out their friend's disappearance, but Heck reminded them that he hadn't dragged anyone into the maze by force. Suddenly, Min Guk nudged his blade, saying that he didn't want to listen to anything, and was about to head forward when a powerful throw of a huge axe cut his body into pieces, and the Minotaur's terrifying scream was heard from behind. The monster drew his weapon back and swung it to strike the teenagers in a heap, but suddenly Heck ordered them to disperse and rushed forward, causing Hana to be surprised. The Minotaur brought his axe down, breaking through the stone floor of the maze, but the youth managed to dodge. Noticing this, the game rewarded him with the secret skill leap. The acquired skill allowed him to reduce the difference in strength with a stronger opponent and increase the difference with a weaker one. Heck grabbed the monster's horn and jumped over its head, ending up in front of it. Thanks to this passive ability, it is possible to evolve even at the first level. This was the one and only path to victory that Heck had found through repeated trial and error. The Minotaur continued to launch attack after attack, but the young man knew them by heart, so he easily dodged them, each time increasing the level of the ability. 
The experienced nerd realized that no matter how powerful the monster's attacks were, there was no point to them if it couldn't hit the target. Hana as well as her friends watched this monster's movements with horror, and we're not talking about the Maze Master, unable to believe that they were going to trick someone like him. Heck informed the Minotaur that he was very slow and would not be able to achieve what he wanted by simply swinging his axe, which made the beast visibly angry. The young man knew that it was easy to level up, all he had to do was put his own life on the line and get an equal reward. This time, Heck waited as long as possible for the blade to barely touch his neck, and only then bounced away. The game noticed his efforts and rewarded him with a full one point, Jean assumed it was a very worthy prize for a drop of spilled blood. However, he also realized that random mistakes could lead to death, and so he decided to call it a day. Suddenly he noticed that his former assistants were trying to escape from the labyrinth, so in a flash he found himself near their leader, offering to fight together. He explained that for successfully dodging the attack of the monster, which is right now behind his back and following him, you can get secret points, the young man asked the guys to try, because it's not as difficult as it may seem. Suddenly, the Minotaur brought his axe down on the ground again, nearly finishing off several of the guys in the group. Heck noticed that he shouldn't stand in one place, he should move or at least get away from it. Then he turned to face the monster again, though he didn't do anything about it, just watched as the walls closed in on him as the maze began to rearrange itself again. After moving farther away, the remaining two of the whole group of companions slumped to the ground without strength, and Hana wondered how much longer the Minotaur would chase them. After some thought, Heck suggested that it would be until the very end, because it was attracted to the pollen of the sun moths. The girl could not understand why their companion was doing such dangerous things, and he explained that it was because of his abilities, while the labyrinth was moving, he could rest and then play with the calf again, which he found extremely effective. By the way, Heck warned that they would have to spend exactly one month in this mode until the exit appeared. The guys could not believe that they would have to spend another 30 days in this hell, and therefore decided to go separately, assuming that it would be possible to avoid problems if the monster would only hunt its main target. Jean completely agreed, but warned that rash actions lead to more problems. Hana thought about it and came to the conclusion that there was really no other way out, and therefore decided to follow someone who really knows everything about this labyrinth. Hayak did not object, but warned that everything in this world must be paid for and for clearing the way, too. Meanwhile, one of the players was broadcasting live from the tower, showing how easy it was to fight monsters. Commentators wondered how this madman managed to clear the location in just 15 hours. He and his comrades couldn't get excited, watching the ever-growing view count, which had already brought at least a thousand gold coins. One of the guys remarked that all the viewers were thinking about was the merit of just one person, so it seemed like the video was well edited, considering that no one had guessed the use of additional skills yet. Suddenly, one of the commenters laughed at their result, saying that one guy managed the sweep in just five hours. They didn't believe it at first, but immediately a new video was uploaded to the Hall of Fame, and their video rating skyrocketed. The player couldn't believe that someone managed to pump the item to 10 at once, because it was simply impossible. 10 minutes ago, Jean Heck had ordered his new partners to wander around and prepare everything for the night and enjoyed watching it annoy them. In the meantime, he himself decided to go to the exchange, because he had already managed to accumulate some coins again thanks to his new acquaintances. He had acquired several items that looked like useless trash that no one would buy, but the most important thing was their use. By combining three of them, he was able to obtain the Wheel of Fortune, although there were some limitations due to incompleteness. Heck realizes that it's dangerous to rely on luck all the time, but he knows exactly what the limits are, because he remembers everything perfectly. The young man immediately used the wheel to increase the probability of successfully reinforcing an item, and then he redirected all the power to the dagger and, after doing some math, increased the level of the blade by 10. He swung the dagger and was now certain that this achievement would go into the Hall of Fame. Heck walked back with happy thoughts that he had finally found something new. Meanwhile, for Hana, it was already the 10th day of torture. A sleeping bag made of moss, the same thing for lunch but sometimes mushrooms, the minotaur coming at a certain time, running through a labyrinth on the verge of life and death, and only this guy is able to take the situation normally. Both of them were sure that Heck would just take advantage of them and then just leave them, and the underdogs who were left to sponsor them outside couldn't dig up information about this nerd on the internet. However, they were told that it would take about three weeks to send help to the maze. In trying to find a solution on how to survive during that time, the couple found no better solution than to kill the guide and hide from the monster in a newly discovered cave. 
Her friend decided to act for sure and took a swing, picking up a huge rock from the ground, as he was sure that no one would survive with his head broken. I'll be insanely grateful for your activity, likes and comments, because I worked really hard on this video. Speaking of which, I already have a finished video of this manhwa, but I wanted to know if I should post it and if you would like it. Anyway, if you like this video and want part 2, let's get 2000 likes in 1 or 2 days, then I'll post the sequel on the same day. Also if you've watched this video up to this point, write the secret word in the comments. Relic. That way I'll know you've seen this video to the end. Well, my name is Kumiko, see you later and bye bye.